isn't this um, beautifully packaged cesium chloride? I got it from Elias. He has his own channel. It's called Elias Experiments. And you should definitely go check it out. He makes spectacular experiments. For example, he fills a squirt gun with NAC. It's an alloy between sodium and potassium that's liquid at room temperature. So, I mean, it doesn't get more spectacular than that. And he also makes a lot of educational videos where he explains the background of the things he's doing. So definitely go check it out. There will be a collaboration between him and me. And yeah, stay tuned for that. So let's see what we have here. This is some nice cesium chloride. It's 125 grams per package. And I just love these old um, labels. You can see the impurities in here. And I will use this to make some cesium today. For my collaboration with Elias, I need a lot of smaller cesium vials. And it's just not feasible to make them one by one. So I just made this apparatus. As you can see here, we have 10 small vials we can fill. And I didn't film me making it out of glass because I already made a video about glass blowing um, and I thought it would get boring. If you're interested to see this uh, also, just let me know in the comments so I know what to put in my videos and what not. So yeah, I can, I can better judge what you want to see and what you think is boring if I do it uh, many times over. What I we going to do is the cesium will get, uh, the cesium chloride will get reduced by lithium and distilled over and it will fill this tube here. After the production is done, I can seal it right here under vacuum. So I never have to take off the vacuum of the system. And then I'm going to redistill it from here into these vials. And then I can seal them off one by one. And if one is uh, filled more than the other, I can just tilt it and transfer the cesium from one vial into another. Yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is to weigh out the cesium chloride we're going to need. Here you can see the lithium metal. I will use this metal to reduce the cesium chloride to cesium. It's the same process I used in my other videos. If you haven't seen them, check them out. In my first cesium video, I'm explaining the reaction between the lithium and the cesium chloride in detail. So I will weigh in a little bit of an excess of lithium to make sure all of the cesium chloride um, gets reduced. And I just wanted to show you that when you cut the lithium, the fresh exposed side is a shiny metal color. And over time it oxidizes and gets this dark black color. I'm going to cut this into smaller pieces and fit it in the reaction vessel. So I filled the reaction vessel with the cesium chloride and the lithium. And I sealed it on top with this metal cap. And I connected my glass still. And now I'm going to flush the system with argon. So I'm going to pull a vacuum on the system and then introduce argon, pull a vacuum, introduce argon and do that several times. And afterwards I'm going to pull a vacuum and start the cesium distillation. We already have some cesium coming over and you might be able to see that the glass still is tilted backwards a little bit. That's on purpose to prevent cesium that is dripping down here to flow directly into this bridge and into one of these vials so I can make sure it collects at the bottom here and I can redistill it later. The distillation is complete now and what I'm going to do next is seal off the glass still right here at this point 
while the vacuum pump is still applying vacuum to the system. I will make sure to preheat this with a normal torch before I use my oxygen propane torch so I don't risk cracking the glass due to two rapid temperature changes. And then I'm going to redistill the cesium here into these vials. As you can see, the still has been sealed on the top here, and I'm now going to redistill the cesium from here into these vials. As you might have been able to see, the cesium was bumping when distilling it. The reason is that the surface area compared to the cesium in here is pretty small. Um, I should have used a round bottom flask with a larger volume and attached it down here. So I decided not to distill the cesium. It will work, but um, the vials won't be very pure. That's not necessary because we're using them for experiments where purity does not matter. So I filled the still with argon and then I'm going to transfer the cesium from here into these vials by tilting the still and then I'm going to seal off the vials. Here you can see a problem occurring that I didn't think about when I made the decision to fill the still with argon. The cesium won't flow into the vials without a problem because there's argon inside. So I decided to reapply a vacuum to get the cesium into the vials. Here you can see me boiling off some of the cesium in the vial, so I have a little more room to seal it off. It also preheats the glass to prevent cracking. I just repeated this process to fill and seal off each vial. After the vial was sealed off, I annealed the glass for a few seconds before letting it cool down. Here you can see the result of my partially successful attempt at making 10 cesium vials at once. Well, I mean, it was successful in the way that there are 10 cesium vials, but it wasn't completely successful because, as you can see, these vials aren't very pure. The reason for that is that there was oxygen that got into my still while transferring the cesium, and it oxidized some of it. There's around 2 milliliters of cesium in each of these vials, and it's pure enough for the experiments they will be used for. If you're interested in what Elias and I will be doing with these, 
you can subscribe to my channel and you should also subscribe to his channel. It's an awesome channel. I will link it in the description down below. Nothing works the way you want it to the first time around. So I'm still satisfied with the results and I will make some changes to improve the process. And I'm pretty sure next time around, I will be able to make 10 pure cesium vials at once. Some of you asked me what I do with my glassware that still contains cesium after I'm done. And the answer is that I'm just disconnecting it from the vacuum line or argon line. So ambient air can flow into the system and the cesium will begin to oxidize due to the moisture in the air and the oxygen. After a while, I score the glass with a glass cutter so I can crack it. And then I'm just using a bottle like this filled with isopropyl alcohol and I squirt isopropyl alcohol into the glass um, apparatus and it will react with the cesium pretty slowly. You have to be careful though, it will most likely catch fire. After a while, mainly all of the cesium has reacted and I'm using water to uh, wash out any tiny amounts that are still in the system and clean the glassware from cesium hydroxide and afterwards when it's completely clear you can just dispose of it. You have to be careful though, cesium likes to get stuck in these um, tight spaces here and even when isopropyl alcohol or water is on top of it, it will not react, it will form sort of a passivation layer and you have to heat it up to get the cesium out of there. Otherwise you will have some amount of cesium left in there and it's not safe to dispose of. So you have to make sure that there's nothing left in there. Yeah, I want to thank my Patreons for supporting me financially. I really appreciate that. And I hope you liked today's video. Thank you a lot for watching. Thank you.